So I have an admission to make here, ladies and gentlemen. I have been addicted to Apex Legends lately. I've always had a great deal of respect for this game's gunplay, movement system, time to kill, and just general feel of the moment to moment gameplay. And with season 14 having just released, I have to say that I've been having an absolute blast with some of the changes that have been made in the game and I've been loving grinding out this new ranked season. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here and today we're gonna be having a good old chat about Apex Legends Season 14. Okay, so right out of the gate, let's get to the big ticket item here. The new legend and the first ever sniper to come to the game, Vantage. Vantage is a recon legend that, and I'm just going to come right out and say it here, brings about one of the strongest loadouts in the game right now as far as mobility, intel, and damage output is concerned, at least in my opinion. Starting off here with her passive, the spotter's lens, and Look, I know that everyone is wilding over her ultimate ability here, but let me just posit that this is her most powerful element of her kit. When you are using a scope on a weapon of 2x or higher, you'll see a large blue rectangle in the center of your screen. When a target is in that screen, you'll immediately see how many players are left in that squad of that player that you're targeting, and what evo shields all of those players are running in that squad. This is a crazy amount of information available to players before a fight even starts. To know how much effective HP you have in comparison to the squad that you're about to face is something that we haven't really seen before with maybe the exception of the Seer Q ability. But to also know immediately whether or not it's a full squad or not just passively without needing to target people with an ability is just a massive amount of information. If you also ping a target when you have this reticule and this information present on your screen, Vantage will call out what shield level the target is wearing and how many of them are in their squad, audibly, to your whole team so they can hear. Oh, and if you're using a weapon with a 3x scope or higher, the ability will also give you a bullet drop indicator to tell you how much you need to aim to counter the bullet drop over that range, which is pretty nifty, but in all honesty, that's just a bonus on top of the arm information if you ask me. And I gotta say, this might just be a smidge of power creep coming into the game as far as intel is concerned, but that is just me. She also has a great movement ability as well with echo relocation. Vantage can move her pet, Echo, around the map and to points of interest to her liking, and every 20 seconds she can jump jet to Echo to gain that new position. The jump jet even has a double jump functionality similar to that of Octane's jump pad if needed. It doesn't get you quite the same distance as an Octane jump pad, at least doesn't feel like it does, Man, having it available every 20 seconds is wild and it gives this character the ability to be a real pain in the ass for an enemy team if she's left unchecked. She can seriously reposition and rotate to her advantage at any given point in time should she choose to do so and it's also a great tool for getting out of a fight that quite frankly isn't going your way. As you learn to really abuse this ability, the character really lets you control the flow and pace of a fight, which is a great asset to have. But then we come to her ultimate ability. Now, Vantage is unique in the sense that her ultimate ability is the only one in the game that doesn't technically need to reach full charge before it can be used. Instead, Vantage's sniper mark ability charges in increments, which are represented by how many rounds she has available to fire before needing to recharge again from scratch. She can quote unquote charge up to five rounds into her magazine, but just with one round, she can whip out that ultimate and start plinking a target. The rifle deals 50 base damage with a 1.5 times headshot multiplier, but a successful hit with the rifle also applies a global 15% damage increase on the target it hits from all sources within the squad for 10 seconds. Oh, and subsequent hits on the same target with Sniper's Mark ability are also doubled, which means that a successful body shot followed up with a headshot is enough to take out a full health target running both blue shields and a blue helmet, as an example. That's two shots. It's an extremely powerful ability, and if you can coordinate with your squad well enough, you can get some pretty devastating alpha strikes on opponents with this ability. Vantage really does provide a big package here, and I have a feeling that she is going to be a very strong and consistent pick in the meta for this season unless she gets changed really early on. Now of course there's been a suite of changes made to the legends across the game but I really quickly want to pivot the conversation and talk about some of the weapon changes that were made because 
I gotta be real, I've been digging a lot of these changes. The weapon meta feels like it's been shaken up a healthy amount and it's nice to see some weapons that were once a complete write-off become options again. I can't tell you how nice it is to walk up to an EVA 8 and just not run past it feeling sad and depressed. It's actually viable now and it serves to be a great option even against say the Peacekeeper if it suits your playstyle more. Obviously in all battle royale games you need to have that disparity of loot quality to keep the looting game interesting. Some weapons are just there to pick up at the start of the game as a self-defense tool before you find something better. But I also don't believe that most weapons should feel that way. The majority of your arsenal should feel competitive enough to be taken to the late game, especially as you upgrade it with attachments. And that offers a variety of options to players who have different playstyles and different approaches to the game. I feel like with all the changes that have been made here, with the Eve 8 of changes being used as an example, the weapon pool feels relatively balanced and pretty neat to run with. I find myself using a variety of weapons here. I mean, I took a G7 Scout to the late game recently. I don't remember the last time I did that when the weapon wasn't in the crate. Also, and I know this may be a hot take, I just adore that Skull Piercer is back, man. There's nothing more satisfying than hitting a couple of those sweet headshots with that wingman, and I'm loving the result. I mean, hell, even the 30-30 repeater with the Skull Piercer rounds have been something I've been using lately, and I'll be honest, the 30-30 was never a weapon that I really aimed to pick up once upon a time, but now that it's got Skull Piercer potentially available to it, I gotta be real it's been fun to use. I also have to admit, I really like the hipfire changes that were made in the game, as well as the addition of the laser sights. Hipfire has always felt like an extremely powerful tool in the game, at least to me. With some of the SMGs and even the assault rifles in the arsenal, it felt like you could completely forego aiming down sights and just blast a man down with a crazy hipfire spray in the early game while everyone was on white shields. With the base hipfires being expanded out a bit, and with SMGs now being able to equip laser sights, I kind of think the balance has been struck a little nicer here. Sure, you can still do some really cool stuff with hipfire in the late game, but you can't rely on it as much in the early game to crutch your win at every opportunity. Personally, I really like the trade that's been made here. Generally speaking, the way in which weapons feel is great, and the same can be said for some of the Legends post-update as well. Newcastle, for example, Jesus. Talk about zero to absolute giga chat in one update. His new quote-unquote retrieve the wounded passive, man, if you have a Newcastle on your team, they they are your new medic. Hell, I'd rate Newcastle right now as a better medic over Lifeline. Being able to move at an increased speed while rezzing, while providing protection, it's just a super powerful ability to have in the squad and it lets you relocate while getting your ally up. With the Lifeline ability, you're just sort of stuck there taking the res and completely open to attack if an enemy decides to finish you off. And yeah, sure, it leaves the Lifeline open to get out there and keep fighting, but well, it still leaves the down player with an increased chance of just being targeted and picked off real quickly. But comparatively speaking, I think Newcastle just brings more to the table right now. I've never really been one to play supportive legends, it just ain't my speed, but the Newcastle plays that I've been able to pull off this season so far have felt really special, and it's a character I think I'll be returning to quite a bit during this season. But beyond the legend changes, there's also been a ton of additional changes as well, including the removal of self-revive entirely from the game. The gold knockdown shield now provides the guardian angel perk, the perk once available to the gold backpack. But self-revive Vibes are a thing of the past now. I know this is another controversial change, but I have to be honest, I'm kind of happy this is the case. If your team is dumpstered, or you get to the end of a long-winded engagement and you are simply outplayed in the long run, whether that be through attrition of your supplies or the enemy just had better aim in the long run, that enemy team deserves the win. You shouldn't just get this free second chance because the loot gods blessed you at the start of the game. It throws the pace of engagements out, and given just how friggin' frequent it is to get third-partied on King's Canyon, yeah, the last thing that I want to be worrying about is dealing with some random bloke who has a self-res. Your team died. That should be the end of it. Come back into the next lobby and learn from your mistakes. That does unfortunately though bring me to my next observation so far here. That being that this new King's Canyon is a small third party central kind of a map. If you start engaging someone here, you best be sure that you can deal with them smoothly and quickly because if not, there is a hot chance that a team will be on your ass stupidly quickly to come and cash in on that kerfuffle that you and that other team are having. And if they aren't actively running to you, you can bet that they are preparing to gatekeep 
keep you at the closest choke point on the map. And believe me, King's Canyon here has a lot of choke points to work with. I'm not quite sure if I'm in love with the map for this season of Ranked, and the changes that we have seen to the ring might be contributing to how often we are seeing third parties right now, but the aggression on this map is up there. Get ready for that. This is a fast paced moving map here. The changes to the ring here are also definitely worth highlighting as well. It really leaves you with a lot less time for looting in the early game if you land out on say the edges of the map or even worse at max distance from the first ring. It now has an increased damage over time at the first level and a faster travel to the field as well, making it something that you really can't tank as economically as you used to be able to. I do like that it keeps the game moving at a faster pace and it ensures that teams aren't just, you know, out in the distance, out in the leaf fields camping away, but man, I've been on the receiving end of some really frustrating deaths to even the early game ring. It's something that I've yet to form a final opinion on, to be completely honest, but it certainly requires a change of approach to get it right, and uh, yeah, I feel like it's going to be a learning curve for a lot of players in this season of Apex. But folks, I've got to say, overall, I'm actually really enjoying the season. I like the new legend. I like a lot of the changes that were made to the legend pool across the board. I like how weapon balance is right now for the most part. And I think that overall the weapon pool that is available is relatively balanced. And there's a lot of options for different loadouts to shine here. But I also want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on season 14. Are you grinding out the rank season? Are you playing just a bit casually? Do you like the new changes? Do you like the new legend? Let me know down below. I want to hear everything you guys have to say. If you enjoyed the video, backhand the like button. If you didn't, well, that dislike button also works as well, even though YouTube would like you not to think it does. And if you're new here and you find yourself back in that like button, consider back in the subscribe button whilst you're at it to keep up to date, as we're streaming a lot of Apex Legends right here on YouTube, and we'll be doing more videos coming soon. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.